Hey, it's number one best-selling author and motivational speaker, Eric Qualm, and a lot of you know me as Equal Man. Thank you for joining us for today's seven super tips episode with the one and only Emma Watson. For a lot of reasons, Emma Watson is a superhero, just like we're trying to unlock and unleash your inner superpower. One thing she does among many is she's a huge catalyst for the He For She movement. For those not familiar with the popular He For She movement, the He For She movement is all around feminism being about equality. It's not about we're better than men, it's about equality. And obviously being at Equal Man, that's one of our key tenets. It's all about how do we make the world equal. So without further ado, here are seven super tips from Emma Watson to help you unlock and unleash your inner superpower. I was appointed as Goodwill Ambassador for UN Women six months ago. And the more I've spoken about feminism, the more I have realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. If there is one thing I know for certain, it is that this has to stop. For the record, Feminism, by definition, is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. It is the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. I started questioning gender-based assumptions a long time ago. When I was eight, I was confused at being called bossy because I wanted to direct the plays that we would put on for our parents. But the boys were not. When at 14, I started to be sexualized by certain elements of the media. When at 15, my girlfriends started dropping out of their beloved sports teams because they didn't want to appear muscly. When at 18, my male friends were unable to express their feelings. I decided that I was a feminist, and this seemed uncomplicated to me. But my recent research has shown me that feminism has become an unpopular word. Women are choosing not to identify as feminist. Apparently, I am among the ranks of women whose expressions are seen as too strong, too aggressive, isolating, and anti-men, unattractive even. Why has the word become such an uncomfortable one? I am from Britain, and I think it is right that I am paid the same as my male counterparts I think it is right that I should be able to make decisions about my own body. I think... I think it is right that women be involved on my behalf in the policies and the decisions that will affect my life. I think it is right that socially I am afforded the same respect as men. But sadly, I can say that there is no one country in the world where all women can expect to receive these rights. No country in the world can yet say that they have achieved gender equality. These rights I consider to be human rights but I am one of the lucky ones. My life is a sheer privilege because my parents didn't love me less because I was born a daughter. My school did not limit me because I was a girl. My mentors didn't assume that I would go less far because I might give birth to a child one day. These influences were the gender equality ambassadors that made me who I am today. They may not know it, 
but they are the inadvertent feminists who are changing the world today. We need more of those. And if you still hate the word, it is not the word that is important. It's the idea and the ambition behind it. Because not all women have received the same rights that I have. In fact, statistically, very few have been. In 1997, Hillary Clinton made a famous speech in Beijing about women's rights. Sadly, many of the things that she wanted to change are still true today. But what stood out for me the most was that less than 30% of the audience were male. How can we affect change in the world when only half of it is invited or feel welcome to participate in the conversation? Men, I would like to take this opportunity to extend your formal invitation. Gender equality is your issue, too. Because to date, I've seen my father's role as a parent being valued less by society, despite my needing his presence as a child as much as my mother's. I've seen young men suffering from mental illness, unable to ask for help, for fear it would make them less of a man or less of a man. In fact, in the UK, suicide is the biggest killer of men between 20 to 49, eclipsing road accidents, cancer, and coronary heart disease. I've seen men made fragile and insecure by a distorted sense of what constitutes male success. Men don't have the benefits of equality either. We don't often talk about men being imprisoned by gender stereotypes, but I can see that they are, and that when they are free, things will change for women as a natural consequence. If men don't have to be aggressive in order to be accepted, women won't feel compelled to be submissive. If men don't have to control, women won't have to be controlled. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. If <laughs> If we stop defining each other by what we are not and start defining ourselves by who we are, we can all be freer. And this is what he for she is about. It's about freedom. I want men to take up this mantle so that their daughters, sisters, and mothers can be free from prejudice, but also so that their sons have permission to be vulnerable and human too reclaim those parts of themselves they abandoned, and in doing so, be a more true and complete version of themselves. You might be thinking, who is this Harry Potter girl? <laughs> and what is she doing speaking at the UN? And it's a really good question. I've been asking myself the same thing. All I know is that I care about this problem, and I want to make it better. And having seen what I've seen, and given the chance, I feel it is my responsibility to say something. Statesman Edmund Burke said, all that is needed for the forces of evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. In my nervousness for this speech, and in my moments of doubt, I've told myself firmly, 
If not me, who? If not now, when? If you have similar doubts when opportunities are presented to you, I hope that those words will be helpful. Because the reality is that if we do nothing, it will take 75 years, or for me to be nearly 100, before women can expect to be paid the same as men for the same work. 15.5 million girls will be married in the next 16 years as children. And at current rates, it won't be until 2086 before all rural African girls can have a secondary education. If you believe in equality, you might be one of those inadvertent feminists that I spoke of earlier. And for this, I applaud you. We are struggling for a uniting word, but the good news is that we have a uniting movement. It is called He for She. I am inviting you to step forward, to be seen, and to ask yourself, if not me, who? If not now, when? Two years ago, I launched a campaign called He For She at the UN in New York. I was very nervous before that speech. The nerves were followed by a tremendous high immediately afterwards and a crashing low a few days after that. My best hopes and my worst fears were confirmed all at once. I had opened Pandora's box to a standing ovation and almost simultaneously a level of critique I had never experienced in my life and the beginning of what would become a series of threats. The last two years have been a baptism of fire to say the least, where I learnt just how little I know and also how much. It was my scary first step as an activist, a word I never imagined that I would use to describe myself. So reading the applications of activists who applied here for One Young World Scholarships was surprising to me. Here I was, reading the stories of people from nearly 200 different countries from around the world, with experiences that I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I really just, they were so out of this world to me. And yet, their notes look like my notes. The same themes emerged over and over and over again. There was so much overlap with the things that I had been thinking about and that I had been struggling with. Because the truth is, it had never been about being an activist. It was about the choice to make myself visible and the choices that you made to do that too. Apart from the significant progress the world has made in the cause for equality, the best thing about the last two years has been this. Finding people from such disparate experiences and communities that I found that I have something in common with. This is a community of artists, spiritual teachers, dreamers, thinkers, doers, who work together and support each other. For the first time in my life, I found my sisterhood, a brotherhood, whatever, however you want to describe it, I found my tribe. <laughs> Yeah. 
my hope for you while you're here is that you will find some of your tribe too. I really needed mine. Bobby Kennedy, when he was senator for New York, said, each time a man or woman stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lots of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy, those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest wall of oppression and resistance. That's what we are doing. We, the entire spectrum of the feminist movement, are building an unstoppable current <laughs> for which we need ripples of hope from every age, race, ability, walk of life, from every human experience. I just think the world would be a better place if there were more people like Charlie, who is so compassionate and empathetic and non-judgmental and accepting. And everyone has a story. Everyone has, people intent, tend to judge and interpret behavior without going to the source of that behavior. Like they say that every saint, you know, has a past and every sinner has a future. And it's so true. You can't, I don't know, people can change and, and People make mistakes and people are human and you kind of need to love them for, love them for that. And um, I hope that people take that away, finding a way to love their imperfections and love themselves. And really, you can't truly accept other people until you accept yourself and you can't really accept yourself until you accept other people. It kind of all weirdly goes hand in hand. And when you show, kindness and compassion for yourself, then you're able to extend it and it's all it's all inextricably linked. So I think it I think it would be that. What do you think is like the primary blind spot that guys have about this movement? About feminism, about doing the right thing, just um, what I, is it that we're I not seeing? I think the like, word is really difficult because it seems to inherently suggest a preferential treatment of the feminine over the masculine because it has the feminine in the word. And I think that's a real oversight and a misunderstanding. Um, rather than just basic fairness. Rather than just gender, just, uh -huh. across, just gender equality across the board. This isn't girls are better than boys, boys are better than girls. This is just everyone deserves a fair chance at whatever it is. I think also because a lot of prejudice and certainly misogyny is so normalized. It almost, it's like, it's right under people's noses. So when you raise it, there's kind of like a, well, that's, we've dealt with that. Women, women got the vote ages ago. Like this isn't a thing. And, and then when you start to kind of unravel it for people, they go, oh, I didn't think about that. Or I didn't think about this. And if I were to say I was a feminist, it would be a personal attack on you as a man, as opposed to, a you know a patriarchal system or a, you know something much larger than an individual person. I think also there's a, men think that they can't be feminists. That's a big misunderstanding. Some of the best feminists I know are men. Why? Why do you think they can't? They feel they can't like that. That's not masculine if you're um, a feminist. Yeah, that it's not masculine if you're feminist. That only women can be feminists because it's about. Again, it, it comes back down to that misunderstanding. Of, to the word, they had his feminine, word. so I can't be. Yeah, so I can't touch that. That's, <laughs> I, I like to joke about the man box, which is like, you can only be a man if you fulfill these certain qualities and you stay within this, mm -hmm. this square of like, you're in your man box and you're safe in the man box. And something about, for some men, about going near feminism is, is a step out of the man box. Because they know it's just so fragile. It it's just gonna fragile. fall apart. Like, no, it's gonna fall apart. <laughs> they need to hold that, that box identity together. structure, you know. <laughs> Definitely. And I you know, and I really sense that. And also, no one likes to feel they feel that there's blame attached to that word. And I think that's very difficult to deal with. 
I would want her to know that she is a force to be reckoned with and never to underestimate her own power. Sometimes particularly young girls feel like their voice doesn't matter and what they have to say doesn't really matter. And I think I would want her to know that it does. What I love about Belle is that she's kind of, if you look at her within sort of the category of those Disney characters, she's kind of the rogue. Um, she's a, she kind of like, she, she takes a different course. That was always what I loved about Belle. Like when I think about Belle, I think about her singing uh, Belle Reprise, which is her sort of coming out of her house and singing this song, which is just kind of like bursting out of her, which is, you know, I know everyone around me can't understand why I don't want what everyone else thinks that I should want and which is being handed to me, but I really just want something more. I want something else. Like, I don't, this doesn't fit, I don't fit. She kind of, like the Robert Frost poem, she, she takes the road less traveled. Mm -hmm. And I, I always really identified with that. She's, Belle is no sheep. She's really on her own, she's on her own path. She's friends with sheep, though. She's friends with sheep. She is friends with sheep, but she's on her own thing. And there's this like defiance, and I just I, that that energy, that spirit, was really what I identified with in her. Which was actually amazing because it was it was her who messaged me saying, you know, when are we booking flights to DC? <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, okay, radical mom. Yeah, radical <laughs> mom, love it. Yeah, she was. Uh, it's her first ever protest. Mm -hmm. It was my first ever protest, um, and I think we loved that. It just felt so. There was something that actually in the energy that felt very celebratory. Mm -hmm. It felt very celebratory of the work that we've done that we continue to do. Um, it, it felt really joyful and I love the I love the age ranges as well mm -hmm. like lots of very young kids there mm -hmm. all the way through to you know grandmas marching for their granddaughters mm -hmm. like it was very cross-generational and very peaceful and um yeah very very joyful mm -hmm. in its own way you know like serious but you know I think um it also had a great sense of humor mm -hmm. which is key it's absolutely key. I, I <laughs> Why is that so important? I um, think you're right, but I'd love yeah, to hear why you think that's I think true. as long as no one is, there's something about humor to me which speaks to humility, which, which speaks to, yeah, to being humble, to being human, to, it's such a way to connect people. And I think as long as you're not taking yourself too seriously, mm -hmm. Nothing can go too badly wrong. This is your host, Eric Qualman. Thank you for joining us for today's Seven Super Tips with Emma Watson. We encourage you to follow her movement, He For She. We also encourage you, if you enjoy these Seven Super Tips, if they're helping you unlock and unleash your inner superpower, then definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel below. This is Equal Man signing off, reminding all of you, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. All right, so now we're doing Emma Watson. Yeah. Hermione. Hermione, I was gonna say, uh, right, There's like this linear relationship, the colder it is outside, the more Mr. Driscoll will say, you nailed it, man. Cause he just wants to get out of here. I don't blame him. Here we go, today's trivia with Eric Qualman. Does anyone know the name or the type? Actually, I don't know the name is Hedwig of Harry Potter's bird, owl. But what type of owl is it? It's a snow owl. Oh, you got it? Is that all right? Are you sure? Or are you just saying that's because it's cold?